Hello everyone, welcome to this Dash Mini Lecture. My name is Sun Yi Zhen, and I am PhD candidate at the University Medical Center Groningen, working on artificial intelligence applications in lung cancer. In this mini lecture, I will talk about early detection and prognostic prediction of lung cancer using deep learning techniques. First of all, I would like to introduce the background about lung cancer and deep learning. Lung cancer is one of the most fatal cancers in the world, the leading causes of death among both men and women. The 5-year survival rate for lung cancer patients is only between 10 and 20 percent. However, the mortality rate can be reduced if lung cancer is diagnosed at an early stage and treated in time. Screening trials have been established in many countries to improve early detection of lung cancer, but it results in numerous scans that need to be evaluated, which is labor-intensive. On the other hand, when lung cancer is diagnosed at an early stage in screening, the clinical response of treatment can vary between patients. Therefore, strong needs exist for accurate early detection and prognostic prediction of lung cancer. Deep learning is an advancement in artificial intelligence, allowing the computer system to learn multi-level characteristics directly from the data without inference. One of the most popular deep learning architectures is called convolutional neural network that uses convolutional operations to extract spatial features of targets and the relationship between objects. In recent years, convolutional neural networks have achieved great success in medical image analysis especially for lung cancer. The first project that I would like to talk about is lung nodule detection. So, um, what is a lung nodule? A lung nodule is a small round or oval-shaped growth in the lung. Here are some examples of a nodule in X-ray or CT. A lung nodule normally ranges from 5 mm to 30 mm and it can be an early sign of lung cancer. Therefore, to detect early stage lung cancer, the accurate detection of lung nodules is important. So, um, how does a radiologist detect lung nodules in CT scans? In the clinic, they will just go through several 1 mm extra slices to differentiate between certainly appeared nodules and vessels. Since nodules can be easily confused with vessels in a single slice, maximum intensity projection images are also used routinely by radiologists to find pulmonary nodules. MIP images are the super position of maximum gray values at each coordinate from a stack of consecutive slices. Compared to 1 mm actual slices, MIP images show that nodules are more isolated and vessels are more continuous. You can also find that uh, less false positives showed up in MIP images. Inspired by the clinical procedure map, we explored the feasibility of applying these images to improve the effectiveness of automatic lung nodule detection using convolutional neural networks. We proposed a uh, convolutional neural network based approach that takes MIP images of different slab thickness settings and uh, 1 mm actual section sizes from the LUNA 16 dataset as input 
Such an approach augments the two-dimensional CT slices images with more representative spatial information that helps discriminate nodules from vessels through their morphologies. Here are the results. The table showed that using 1 mm actual slices could only detect around 83% of nodules whereas about 95% of nodules can be detected if results on MIP images or uh, regular slices are merged. Experimental results also show that the number of false positives is also reduced on MIP images. The other project is about survival prediction for early stage non-small cell lung cancer. Stereotactic body radiation therapy is a good alternative for early stage non small cell lung cancer patients who are not fit enough for surgery. However, uh, the two year overall survival rate after SABER can vary from 50% to 71%. An accurate prediction of overall survival is of importance to help offer personalized treatment strategies for those patients. Therefore, our studies aim to develop and evaluate a prognostic model using deep learning for two-year overall survival prediction. For model development, um, training and independent test sets, including 189 and 81 patients who received stereotactic radiotherapy were prospectively collected at the University Medical Center Groningen and external validation was performed on 228 early stage non-small cell lung cancer patients who were treated with radiotherapy at the uh, Mastro Clinic. A hybrid model that integrated both image and clinical features was implemented using deep learning. The figures show that um, image features were learned from uh, cubic patches with the size of 64 by 64 by 64 voxels containing lung tumors extracted from pretreatment CT scans. Relevant clinical variables were selected by univariable and uh, multivariable analyses. Multivariable analyses show that age and clinical stage were the significant prognostic clinical factors for uh, two-year overall survival. Using these um, two, uh, two clinical variables in combination with uh, image features from uh, pretreatment CT scans, the hybrid model uh, achieved an AOC of 0.76 and uh, 0.64 on the UMCG and uh, master test sets respectively. Um, on the right side, uh, you can see from the Kotlin-Meyer survival curves, um, they showed that uh, a significant separation between um, low and high risk modality risk groups on both test sets. In conclusion, our studies show that uh, combining clinical procedures Deep learning techniques can accurately detect pulmonary nodules independent of size. Besides, by integrating clinical factors and imaging features, deep learning can identify high modality risk lung cancer patients. Such a model has the potential to guide clinical decision making. And um, with the implementation of lung cancer screening programs, more imaging and clinical data will be available. This enables deep learning to further boost the efficiency of screening procedures and lower the lung cancer modality in the future. At the end, I would like to thank DASH, the Data Science Center in Health, to give me this nice opportunity to present my PhD projects here. And thank you for your time to follow this mini lecture. And if you have any questions or bright ideas, please feel free to contact us.